show after the show where we get to continue conversations, especially about locals doing amazing things. We are back with Max Morell, who is sharing your family's mission to change lives one at a time. So we got to hear a little bit about it live on the show today, but I want to take a deep dive into your initiative for Barrio La Maria. Barrio La Maria. Barrio La Maria. There we go. Barrio La Maria. (laughs) And how you really got connected and compelled mm-hmm. to start doing this with your family to change the lives for families of others so it's it, a deep dive is a deep dive then so essentially um it, we'll start from the very beginning if you like yeah. um with my family i mean we we grew up dirt poor like completely poor um i spent two years without my parents at a very young age when my parents came from dominican republic to the united states to set up life for us Um, It's a weird transition, especially when you're getting a green card or getting your your paperwork. It takes a very, very long time. Um, For us, it unfortunately took two years. So that was two years without my parents. It forced me to grow up very, very quickly. Um, When we moved to New York, Jana, it was one of those where it was um, the size of this room, like 700 square feet, if not less. For your whole family? For my whole family. And I'm one of five. So we have five kids and then two adults. And we were just crammed in there. But every Christmas, I recall my mom going to like the Catholic church and it was, you know, getting toys from us and different things. And back then, even even till now, I'm like, I don't want anything. I, like they worked so hard to provide for us back then. that I was just like, I don't, I don't want anything at all. And seeing my parents go from nothing to something and then them finally being able to retire recently and we're talking about a guy that worked landscaping most of his life and then my mother um she worked at a taco bell and then from taco bell she worked at as a custodian at a school so their entire lives blue collar their english was horrible um but they got by and they worked very very hard to get to where they're at now um recently they retired but every year what they would do is that they'll come to me and my brothers um and it was one of those where it's like hey you have old clothes and you don't need them anymore give them to us um and they would put together a box Mm -hmm. and that box they'll put it in a shipping container and off to dominican republic it went we we never saw the clothes or anything like that but it was to serve the community where they came from and what a lot of people don't know is that there's a lot of communities out there that are literally unreached Mm -hmm. you can't get into these communities because of violence or you got churches in there which unfortunately are are fairly corrupt so when you have people that go in and help their own it makes a world world of a difference so when i first started traveling every trip that i had or that i've made it was Mm -hmm. one of those where it's like all right how can i give back doesn't matter how small it was like it was just one of those like how can I give back Mm -hmm. Um, I remember my first trip to Colombia um, there was the turmoil in Venezuela like it just bled over into the city and I I remember there was a young young girl maybe 12 13 years old on a corner selling lollipops well I gave her four US dollars essentially which equated to 20 million pesos for them which is significant she started crying and it, it, her brothers came to the taxi where I was in. I, I didn't buy any of the candy. She tried mm-hmm. giving them all to me. It's like, I didn't want the candy. Right. It's just, I, I knew where they were coming from. I knew they weren't from there, but it's, it's that hustle and bustle that, you know, these people have to try to push forward right. um, when they have nothing and they have very little. And then um, we ended up going to um, Nagua. Um, in Dominican Republic so we're just driving Um, we went it was just it was a group of us um, from work we went there Uh, we were having a great time and we went from one town to another and on the way back from um, it was Puerto Plata we passed a town called Nagua and there was a few kids on the side of the road again I'm Dominican by birth Mm -hmm. Um, and I can tell you many of stories with these kids you know taking showers in the streets because it's raining or what have you but you got these kids on the side of the road and they were counting coins i was just kind of like you know wonder what they're doing so i had some change left over from that trip 
And I hate bringing money back, especially because the currency, the, the dollar value just goes so far in a lot of these foreign <laughs> countries. Um, I, <laughs> I actually pulled over on the side of the road and I went to talk to them. I'm like, hey, here's a few bucks. They took off running. Um, like completely just jotted sprinting. down, yeah. sprinting away from me. Like they, they wanted nothing to do with us. Here you have this strange SUV pulling off on the side of the road trying to give these kids money, which I completely understood. Right. Um, they ended up turning into a neighborhood not far from there, and you had the elders that were pretty much sitting outside. Mm -hmm. I went over there. I introduced myself to them. I told them, you know, where I was from, what I did for a living, and we hit it off in a conversation. And the money I was going to give to the kids, I gave it to the grandpas. Mm -hmm. They were, you know, they were sitting outside and talking. Once you're able to connect with them and say, mm -hmm. like, I'm not here to exactly. cause harm. And, and they, they told me that essentially what, what's going on in a lot of these places, especially places like Nagua in the Dominican Republic, is these kids are getting kidnapped. They're getting trafficked and they disappear. Obviously, it's there are stories out there that, you know, the news doesn't touch or there are organizations that they don't they don't go there. Mm -hmm. um, so that was that one. When we returned to Colombia, um, I had some friends that reached out. And they're like, hey, we did this um, for this event. If you'd like to donate, and I was like, we're we're coming back. We're we're coming back. We're gonna do a vacation there. Um, we had excursions planned out mm -hmm. essentially for for the week. Um, my day it was supposed to be ATVs. So my brothers and I had money set aside for ATVs. Um, instead of doing that, we already brought the toys over. Mm -hmm. So we were gonna donate toys. That was that was a plan. It was never a plan to donate food. Um, so we took the money from the ATVs. It was $150 a piece, mm -hmm. um, between the three of us. Um, so my brother pitched in his, his 150, I pitched in my 150 and then my other, my other brother pitched in his 150. Um, and then we got with the community here where I just literally, I, I posted it on my Instagram. I had my neighbors had colleagues mm -hmm. that, you know, donated to this. And then I had family members that was like, hey, here's here's some money. Go do what you do. Um, we ended up raising around like 600 bucks um, on top of with what we put in and then coming out of pocket, maybe another three, three, four hundred bucks, which there in total, we spent maybe 1500 bucks, but 1500 bucks to be able to feed 40 families was a, like mind-boggling yeah. the, the cost of living there compared to here is there's a huge difference um when we were there um and we were doing the donations uh, the the part that broke me the most was we had um kids that would tell kids hey we just got toys um so initially we had a list of you know 40 40 families with their kids and but kids talk and as they talk, I'm like backing up because I feel like I know where this is going, and I was told not to cry specifically. Um, as they um, they talk, we ended up having close to 100 kids show up, um, and having to turn away that amount of kids, um, it was just it, it was heartbreaking. Um, but where we were at, um, you know, if you saw the video, can we actually roll the video? That that home. The, the home that hosted us was nice mm -hmm. compared to, you know, the homes that are like further down the road, like you're talking about. It, it's, I, I don't even know how to describe it. Cause I mean, I, I do actually want you to try to describe it because the homes here, I think we have to agree that like, it's a, it's a challenging term. Cause these are homes made of pallets, like pallets. things that you would ship on. Yeah. Um, you know, you'll see some of the photos here in a second. And I, my heart breaks for you because I'm just looking at this video and like I can't imagine people continuing to line up and and not having what you what you needed. So this continuing to grow. The lady that was there a few moments ago, she actually had cancer and like she came up there with her child and like she was frail, like super super frail. Um, so it's there was there's this one young lady that she's not in the, she not in the video but we made sure that we reserved some food for her because she was mm -hmm. working right um but her home it was just it's pallets they'll put curtains up behind the pallets they'll you know 
they may paint the palettes. Her home was green, like a bright green, but it was just palettes. Yeah. You can see through it. You can move the curtains. You know, they can open up the door and just walk on in, and it's just like tin on top of the pallets. Um, there's another one with an older man. He has like one light bulb in, in his home, and his walls are just falling apart. But again, there's just pallets, and he'll they they put dirt in between to cement it in. But it's one of those where John of the it's such a tourist hub. The only thing they care about is the tourism. They forget about the people that live there, outside of there. So even as tourists, like, we'll, we'll show up there. We'll, we can have a great time. We can eat, you know, a steak dinner for $6, sure, no problem. But everyone else outside of there, they may go hungry that day. So that's why, like, we made sure that the kids had at least one hamburger that day, which was phenomenal um, for us to be able to do that. But it's heartbreaking when it's one of those where it's like it, – your own community forgets you exist um, or you can't rely on a church in your community because that church will take everything and mm -hmm. it just disappears um, so when you have that outside help that mm -hmm. little extra push goes a long way which is why I, long term wise I, I know my goal my mm -hmm. goal is eventually is to start something up where I can reach the unreached. Mm -hmm. That's that's the name that right. I want that, that I want to use. Right. It's um, reaching the unreached, um, because there are a lot of places that churches can't get into. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of places that organizations don't get into at all. Um, and it's not so much that that they can't. It's that that connection, mm -hmm. um, being able to connect with the right people in the right places, right. and being able to do that. I've been blessed. Um, essentially because I've been able to connect with the right people. I've been able to go in and make friends and, hey, how can we give back to this community? And to have a family that would be willing to host us in an area where tourists are not allowed right. at all was more than I can ask for. And I, I love that you're just demonstrating here. Um, obviously, this QR code, you scan it right now with your phone. I know you have a phone in your hand. Lift it up. Scan the QR code. Whatever you can donate is helpful. This is one of our own community members going out, making a difference. And I know that this has such a heartfelt connection for you, just demonstrating that, hey, if you wanted to, you can. Absolutely. Um, and just taking that initiative. So everybody watching with River City Plus this morning, um, I'm sure your eyes welled up just like mine did. If you feel moved in your heart, please, please, please just scan that QR code, share it on your Facebook. Everyone has one of three things, time, talent, treasure. I always say this. So share one of those with Max and his brothers. We are reaching the unreachable one person at a time. So Max, thank you so much for sharing that story with us this morning on River City Plus. We really appreciate it. Okay, everybody, we're gonna be back with you tomorrow morning for River City Live, highlighting locals one at a time.